Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna talk about feeling stuck. I have so many clients, especially highly sensitive people that come to me with this stuck feeling and I'm gonna tell you exactly why it's created, exactly what to do about it. This may be new information for you, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new, please click the little subscribe button, the bell to receive notification when I release new videos. And if you've been with us for a while, thank you so much and welcome back. We totally appreciate it when you share the videos because it helps us reach and heal more people like you. So please do that. I also want to mention if you follow me on social media, on Instagram, I do post these daily reels that sometimes do not make it to my YouTube channel for quite a while. So please check out Instagram as well at Candice Van Dahl. So diving in. This client today was so passionate about her stuckness. You guys know what I'm talking about. When you feel stuck, you feel this frustration because you know what you want, but you just can't seem to figure out how to get there, or you don't have the motivation, you don't have the time, you have every excuse in the book, or things aren't just happening for you. And I want to tell you what that is, right? Being stuck like this is equal parts desire, equal parts fear. So I'm going to tell you about my client's story, which is basically everybody else's story I've ever heard about being stuck in a nutshell. This is why I put it together like this. Her deepest desire was to be X, right? <coughs> but she also has a lot of jealousy and anger about people who are already doing this, right? Think about that. But she already has something that she's doing that she's really good at, but it's not fulfilling at all. And she feels stuck because she doesn't know how to actually get this other thing happening. And I said, that's a lie. Sorry. I always say to my clients, you might get mad at me if I say this, but this is the truth. And then every time I say it, they're like, I know it's true. So I said, you might get mad at me. But the truth is, um, <laughs> you are not allowing yourself to do that thing because you're deathly afraid of what might happen if that thing doesn't work. You're also deathly afraid of what might happen if it does work. Think about this. <clears throat> a lot of these fears are subconscious. A lot of these fears come from being a sensitive person. When you're a sensitive person, you're not really seen in the world. You're not really understood. A lot of us have a lot of wisdom that we don't know how to articulate young in our lives. That was me. I remember my biggest frustration as a kid is I knew things I didn't have words for. And I'm like, why aren't they getting it? Why aren't they mirroring me? Why aren't they telling me what I know? And then you also get frustrated because you're like, like my client, she's like, I knew all this 10 years ago. I'm like, how do you think I feel? I wrote a book 11 years ago that I never published. And now people are starting to talk about this stuff. It's very frustrating. At the same time, I know that if something's meant for me, it won't miss me. When you decide to not fear your potential, life comes and meets you, right? So my book will be out probably early next year. The reason is because the universe wasn't ready. That is the reality. And also, there were things I knew that I needed to get more clarity on before I really put on the finishing touches. Yeah, took a decade. True. So back to being stuck. So she really has this desire, but the underlying desire wasn't that desire. This is what I mean. If I have that thing, what do I get? What does that do for me? Think about this. I have this desire. I'm stuck because of my fear. What am I afraid of? If I do get this desire, what does that do for me? So I asked her, I go, if you become this thing, what does that do for you? Well, to be quite honest with you, her underlying issue, where is her notes, was exactly what I said. She didn't say any of this. She's like, well, because then I get to sound like I'm smart. And I get to, and I go, no, that's really not it at all. I wrote this down. I said, she's looking for proof that she is important. That's just what hit me, right? Because your inner child talks to me. I said, could it be that you're looking for proof, external proof, if I become that thing? See, everyone, I'm important. She started to cry. She goes, yeah. I said, okay, you're not really looking for everyone else to see that you're important. You're looking for you to see that you're important enough to go after the thing that you truly desire. But your fear says, maybe I go after this desire and it will turn out that I'm not important. It'll prove to me I'm not important. And I said, how so? If you make this important for you, you are now self-validated that this is important. And you being important has nothing to do with what you do. It has to do with feeling who you are. So look at your desire that has equal fear, that keeps you stuck. Part of you knows this is an ego thing. 
The other part of you knows it's an ego thing. It's an ego thing to be shiny, right? Golden shadow work. It's an ego thing to be afraid of not being enough. So let's take all the ego out of it and let's look at the truth. Where is the drive? My drive in doing what I was doing is I understood a lot of things that if someone could have articulated it for me really, really young, it would have been really, really good. So now I'm articulating for the people that don't have words yet to understand themselves. Here you go. Let me help out younger Candace. All of you, right? Let me help out younger Candace by becoming the thing Candace needed because no one else was. I remember this therapist I had one time said to me, oh my gosh, you've become the mother that you never got and needed. And now you're going to be that for so many other people's inner child. I'm like, I know, <laughs> right? So we become the thing we need. So when I'm talking to my client, I'm like, what is the thing that you need? You need to feel like you're important. No one in your family is going to make you think that because you're right brain. They're all left brain. They're scientists. You're an artist. Not going to happen there. You have to give yourself the importance to know that you're important enough to put into the world the things that you have to say. You want your voice to be heard by people that can value it. Your family structure doesn't value it. Sometimes we are born into family systems that are unlike us. It's like when I was younger, I used to say, I'm a dolphin born to a family of wolves. They don't get me. But I get me. And then I put it out there. And now others who get me can come into the community. All of you. Right? So my client, I'm pulling for her. And I know she's going to do it. I said, girl, stop. I said, if you believe what the universe has already set up for you as true, then that support will come to you, not from the people you want it from, your tribe. No, maybe an even bigger tribe. And then after the bigger tribe sees you and validates you because you validated yourself, maybe your original tribe will rise to meet you. Or maybe not because you won't care by that because you've already made yourself important. I remember, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, but I remember one year, I don't know how many years ago, a long time ago, I remember my mom saying to me, you made yourself significant. You made yourself important. And I remember thinking, God, I never really thought about it that way. But I know what I have to say is important, right? And if she or whoever didn't make me feel that way, I knew it was my role to make myself validate that what I was saying was really true. I told my client today, I said, the reason I got into this business wasn't to make it a business. It was to share the truth that had worked for me when nothing else had. I had discovered these understandings that I was so fiery about sharing because I had never heard it before. It was like a download I had and I wanted to share it because I knew that when I listened to that download, it worked for my life. So I didn't start sharing to tell people to listen to me. I started sharing to help people listen to themselves because your wise guide inside knows everything it needs to know for you that was born perfect for your purpose. My client was born perfect for her purpose. I was born perfect for my purpose. But if we don't, Start to heal the parts of us that we abandon to fit our unhealed family system. We can never be perfect in our purpose. I'm going to do a video on that next week or in a couple of days because when we start to claim the parts of ourselves we abandon to cope with an unhealed environment, that's when everything shifts. So I hope this message finds you well. I should mention, I've been telling you guys about my new course, I Am Worthy, but Shadow Work is also open right now for enrollment starting September 1st. And I have to mention Shadow Work with this client today um, on this topic because Shadow Work is healing the mother-father tribal wound so that you stop hiding from yourself and your purpose. We hide from ourself and our purpose when being who we naturally are isn't getting our needs met. So we have to really learn that we can't keep catering to wounded systems. We have to really come back into our health and our wholeness by not being afraid of this light. More on that in the next video. But shadow work will start to heal you to the place where there's no shame to shine. The golden shadow is a part of you, like my client, who's jealous of people who's doing what she wants to do because she hasn't healed her golden, golden shadow to feel secure and safe and confident enough to shine in the truth of who she is. So if you're interested in that work, shadow works below. Please share this video if you think that it will help someone you know. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.